Hello, this is module number 28. You really have to use your imagination now. As you see, I have some items sit, sitting up here. I have to pretend that this is a flower. Nectar, the petals. You could decorate it with petals, make it look more like a flower. Here we have blood. Skin. These are actual seeds, so you don't have to imagine these are actual seeds. Seeds. And pretend this is a spill that's on your kitchen counter that you spilt on your countertop in your kitchen. So what I have in this bag, I have four different insect mouth parts. I'm going to reach in and pull out an insect mouth part and you're going to tell me what type of insect that that mouth part, you know, go, go with. And then you're going to tell me what type of food would that insect eat having that type of mouth part. Okay. <laughs> this is called a chewing, a chewing mouth part. What type of insect would have a chewing mouth part? Insect now, talking about insects. How about a grasshopper? Crickets? A roach? Ants? Praying mantis? What type of food? Grasshoppers eat grass, seeds, well, seeds, right? Chew, chew, chew the seed. Okay? Hmm. This is called a sucking mouth part. It's able to curve around, get in the tight places. What type of insect? What type of food would you think be good for this type of mouth part? Butterfly. A butterfly. So what type of food? The flower. So, it, you know, it can curve around and get into all the little areas. So, yeah, gets to the nectar, okay? This one is very sharp, pointed. This is called a piercing sucking mouth part. Piercing sucking mouth part. What type of insect? Probably one of my least favorites. A mosquito, a mosquito. Well, what food? Pretty obvious, right? The blood. And only have one type of food left. The mouth part is a sponging, lapping mouth part. What type of insect? 
We only have one type of food left, the spill that's on your kitchen countertop. What kind of insect could be flying around your house and land on that and soak it up, lap it up? A fly. A fly. I get wet, it gets kind of sideways. We'll put it like that. Okay, flies are very, <laughs> are very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> if you go on a picnic, it, it's a good idea to use wheat bread or honey wheat because it's a darker bread. If you use white bread, a fly lands on the white bread, and if you watch it, when he when the fly flies away, it leaves a little spot on the bread. They kind of eat and regurgitate and what else they're gonna you know they do other things too but but that's why if you use wheat bread it's still there but you can't see it when you eat your sandwich so this activity is really cool this came from Ames this is from one of the Ames books called Critters and the name of the activity is called table manners table manners I love this activity there are similar activities using bird beaks. You'll see that also. Different types of bird beaks eat different types of food. If you want to get fancy with this, you could you can make a poster like this. So you have a beetle, mosquito, a butterfly, a fly, and you can Make it like a puzzle. Sucking mouth part. We said that was what? Butterfly? We don't have any magnets or tape, so we'll soon we put that, stuff that up there, right? Piercing, sucking. Which one was piercing, sucking? Sucking? Mosquito, right? See how it fits? Chewing mouth part. Didn't mention this one over there, but a beetle. beetle beetles also have chewing mouth parts. And if these were stuck on there, you would see that they would fit like a puzzle. And we have one left. Sponging, lapping them mouth part. Sponging, lapping mouth part, of course, is the fly. You can make one of these and laminate it so you can use it over and over again. And this is a great activity. Life science is my favorite science. So the Critters book from Ames, that's, that's my favorite Ames book.